Hey folks, in this episode we're going to be learning how to make these sparks using the particle systems in Blender. It can be used for VFX to composite over video footage, you can use it as billboards, whether it be in a 3D scene in Blender or in a game engine. You just render the final product out as an image sequence or a movie clip and then import it into your scene. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to have three objects here, a particle, an emitter, and a collision object. Let's add the particle. Shift A, add, mesh, and we'll go for icosphere. I'm going to leave it at subdivisions level two. I'm going to hit Z, shade smooth. We'll then rename this object, particle. I'm then going to hit numpad one, and I'm going to hit G, Z, hold down control to snap it to the grid, and I'll bring it down to about there. The second object is going to be the emitter, so we're going to use a plane for that. So shift A, mesh, and we'll choose plane. I then tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit S.1, hit enter, and tab out of edit mode. Let's just rename this to emitter. I'm going to hit numpad 1, and then I'm going to drag this to around about there. The third object is going to be the collision object, which will be a plane. So Shift A, mesh, and we'll choose plane. I then tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit S5 to scale it up by 5, hit enter, and tab out of edit mode. Let's just rename this to collision. So with the collision object selected, I'll go into my physics tab over here, and then we're gonna hit collision. And for the stickiness, I'm gonna hit 0.25. I'm then gonna copy that value by hitting Control C, and then I'm gonna paste it in here, Control V, Control V, and so on and so forth. We are probably gonna to have to change these settings in a minute, but that will do for now as a base holder. I'll then select the particle emitter, and we'll go to particle settings. I'm gonna hit this plus button here to add a new particle system. Now if I push play, the particles are being emitted. There is a problem. They're being emitted upwards and gravity is taking them down. I'll show you what I mean. So we open up velocity and I'll turn this to five meters per second. I'll then rewind, push play. As you can see, they're all being emitted up and then they're falling back down. We don't want that. So we're gonna have to rotate this object by 180 degrees. So I'm gonna hit R, Y, 1, 8, O. And now they'll all be pointing down. Okay. As you can see, it's kind of bouncing off the surface of the collision object. So now we need to rotate this, so I'm going to hit R, and we're just going to rotate it so it fires into the scene a bit more. Every time you make an adjustment with the emitter object, or the collision object, or any of the settings in the particle systems, just tap this rewind button here, and that will reset the particles so you don't get any errors. And now if I hit play, as you can see, it's doing what it should be doing. The second thing we need to tackle is, at the moment, the particles are being emitted as halos and they don't render in your render engine. So we go to the particle system settings, we go to render, and we replace that halo by selecting object, and the object is our particle, which is the icosphere down here. So now if I push play, nothing's changed. It's just your particles have been replaced now. For the start frame and the end frame and the lifetime, this is quite a simple concept. If we've got, let's say, 500 particles and if we wanted them all to be generated on the first frame look at the frame start and end frame as spawning 500 particles are going to spawn on frame one and they're going to stop spawning on frame one so frame one will have 500 particles or you can say for example we want the particles to start on frame one and we want them to stop spawning on frame five and the lifetime of the particles will be 50 frames so then 55 frames all the particles should have disappeared so if i push play they're going to start on frame one stop spawning on frame five and they'll all disappear on frame 55. we'll increase the lifetime though let's say give it a lifetime of 90 so then if i hit rewind push play and they'll last for 90 frames that's probably a bit long that's just an example so what we're going to want here we're going to want them to spawn from frame one to frame five and we want a lifetime of 60 frames which will be two seconds oh to correlate that set your frame rate to 30 frames per second and with that 60 frames will be two seconds this lifetime random number here so what this means is if i hit 0.5 for example, so the particles will last 60 frames, but then they'll randomly disappear at 50%. So I'm going to set this to actually 0.25. So 25% of the particles would have disappeared before it reaches 60 frames. The next thing to do will be we go to render and we want to disable show emitter because when we render, we don't want to see this plane. We only want to see the particles and we'll also adjust the size of the particles. So let's just uh, rewind and push play a minute. Let's just adjust the size of these particles. 
they've got to be really small. Sparks will be small. And we'll give them a scale randomness as well of 0.5. That's still probably a bit big, but we'll keep it there for now. We can fine tune it in a minute. It's a bit bouncy, so I'm going to take my collision object, go to physics. I'm going to turn up the dampening and I'm going to turn up the friction slightly. And the stickiness, I'll also turn that up to maybe 0.75. Let's just see what we've got here. So I'll select my particles, I'll rewind, hit play. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now we're going to add a second particle system. So with your particle emitter selected, I'm going to hit this plus button here and we're going to choose the previous particle system that we made because we don't need to set all these settings again. So if I click here, I go to particle settings. Now it's got exactly the same particle system as the first one but if I click this two button it will make it unique and then I'm going to turn the particle systems up to 1000 and we're going to change the spawn start and spawn end so let's say we want these ones to start spawning at frame 20 and we want them to stop spawning on frame 25 and then we'll keep the lifetime at 60 and we'll keep the random value up to 0.25 but we'll change the seed so if i drag this to a random seed then if i hit rewind and play you'll see two particle systems one starting at frame one and the other one starting on frame 20 and the second one's got more particles so i might even turn those particles up to 2000 okay Excellent. And one thing we will need to adjust now is the size of this plane here. It's a bit big. If there was um, a single source, like if it was an angle grinder or an electrical fault which is causing these sparks, it wouldn't come from an area this big. So I'm going to hit S.1. We'll just scale that down to 0.1 and then I'll rewind and hit play. There we go. I'm going to give it some randomness as well because they're a bit uniform. To give it randomness let's just mute the second particle system i'll go to the first particle system and under velocity with this randomized value i'm going to turn this up to 0.25 and i'm going to select this second particle system and i'm going to set that to 0.25 now i'm going to hit rewind there we go we've got more of a random spread here excellent we'll bake our animation so on frame 90 all the particles have disappeared so set your end frame to frame 90. Before we can bake the simulation, which is under your cache, you need to save your file. So save your file in a location of your choice. So that's save as, and then I'll just save mine as Sparks Particle Tutorial Concept. Click save as. Now that that's saved, we've got three options here. If we use disk cache, this will save your bake in a folder which is specified in your user preferences, which under file paths. So it'll be in your temporary folder, I believe, or possibly your render cache. Alternatively, if you just have this option, use library path, then this will save your bake where your Blender file is actually saved. And if you unclick this library path and have none of these selected and you bake it, it will be baked into your actual Blender project itself. So I'm going to select this option, hit the rewind button, and then I'm going to hit bake all dynamics. It didn't take long at all. So now let's add a material to our particle. This is going to be in cycles. Switch to cycles. I just sort my sampling out. So I'm just going to set this to 0 0.025 for the noise threshold. I'll keep it at 1024 for the max samples. Under light paths, we do not need refractive or reflective core sticks. Maybe we can bump up the transparency to 16. So with the particle selected, I'm just going to get my crosshair up here in the top left. I'm going to drag it across and then I'm going to change this to shader editor. I hit N to get rid of that panel there. Okay, so I'm going to hit play so we can see our particles here. I'll then go into rendered view. I'll turn off overlays, make sure the particle is selected and then click new. Delete the principled BSDF. I'm going to hit shift A, shader, and we'll go for emission shader. I then plug that into the surface. We should see all our particles here. I'm then going to add a color ramp. So shift A, converter, color ramp. I'm then going to add a particle info. So shift A, input, particle info. I'm then going to add a math node. So shift A, converter, math, and we'll change this to divide. Let's add some color to this. We'll have three flags. The first color is gonna be red. So you go to RGB and we'll have red selected. The second one will be a bright orange. The third one will be a bright yellow. Actually, it's gonna take four flags. So the next flag, this one here, and that's going to be white. We drag this yellow right across till it's almost touching. I might manually type in 0 0.01. We we'll drag this red flag across, drag the orange flag across. I might make this a bit more yellow. So around about 
there. Now the idea is, plug the colour ramp into the colour. Let's just turn the strength up to say 5 for now. You can increase this a bit later on. And then we're going to divide the age by the lifetime of the particle. And then we'll pull that formula into the colour ramp. When a spark is first emitted, it's really hot, so it's white hot. And then as it cools, it turns to a red colour. And that's the kind of effect that we're trying to go for. You can kind of see that coming out there. And maybe this red could be darkened slightly as well. Okay. As the spark cools down, it doesn't burn as bright. Let's add the next element, which will be transparency. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Shader, and we'll go for Mix Shader. Then I'm going to hit Shift A, Shader, and we'll go for Transparent Shader. And then we'll add a color ramp, Shift A, Converter, color ramp. And then we're going to drag this formula into this color ramp here and we'll also select the color from this color ramp into the factor of the mix shader and then the more i drag this flag across you'll see the more it goes transparent so we just want it to fade out slightly and maybe we can change this to ease i could even change this one to ease just for a smoother interpolation there let's add a camera into the scene so i'm going to hit numpad one and then i'm going to hit shift a and we'll go for camera I then tab numpad zero to go into my camera view. If you haven't got a numpad, by the way, you should be able to go to view cameras, active camera. Then I'll go to the object transform over here and I'm going to drag it on the Y axis to round about there. I'll drag it on the X axis. Let's just see our focal length, 50 mil. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We'll keep it at 50 mil for now. So here's the emitter and the particles, we've got to frame it. The particles will always stay in frame going out of frame around here so I'm going to select my camera and go back to my transform I'm going to drag this across I'm also going to drag it up slightly by one meter and we'll drag it in to around about there let's just see what we've got so far maybe we can bring it back on the x-axis and then if I go into rendered view just to frame it a bit better rewind and hit play okay maybe I can frame it a bit better we'll get a bit closer and I'll take it down to 0.5 meters on the z-axis. So you've got a nice side view of what we're doing here. Maybe we can adjust this color ramp slightly as well. So I'm going to select my particles. We're just going to drag this yellow flag across. So 0.005 and we'll drag the orange across. So we're getting more orange and a better fade on the red. So now if I hit render, go into look dev view, I hit F12. So as you can see, We've got no streaks and the particles are a bit big. So let's sort that out now. I'm going to select my particle system. I'll go to the particle settings. We can change the scale of the particles without having to rebake. So with the first particle system, I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.0025. And on the second one, it's going to be 0 0.0025. There you go. Let's just render that. That's a bit better, smaller particles. Maybe we can increase the randomness a bit more with the first particle system selected. I'm just gonna close these so we don't have to keep jumping up and down. I'm gonna change the randomness to 0.75 and I'll also do the same for the second one, 0.75. So there's a bit more randomness in size. And now this is where the magic happens. We're gonna activate motion blur down here in your render properties activate motion blur the correct way to calculate motion blur is quite a straightforward formula so if you go to your output for example if this was set to 25 frames per second 25 times 2 is 50 so then on your render settings on the motion blur that will be 0 0.50 50 but where we're at 30 frames per second our motion blur is going to be 0 0.6 because 60 is 2 times 30 and so if you're doing VFX shots and you're compositing 3D elements over real world footage, it's always good to know at how many frames per second that the camera's been shooting and you can adjust your shutter speed accordingly. And now with motion blur set, you just hit F12 and we should see some magic happen in here. Let's choose a different frame so we can um, better visualize what's going on here. Maybe we can drag those flags out a bit more. So it's just gonna be tweaking. So select your particle, We'll drag this out. Let's just visualize what we're doing here. Okay, let's try that. That's still probably a bit bright. So I'm just gonna drag this across just a tiny bit. We'll try that. Excellent. So now with this plane selected, you've got a few options here. You can render it out with the glow on the floor plane, but if you don't want that, just simply grab that plane, add a material, delete the principled BSDF, 
and we'll hit shift A and we'll go for shader, transparent shader, and we'll just plug that into the surface. So now there'll be no reflections. And then when you've rendered this out as an image sequence or as a movie clip, when you import that movie clip back into Blender or into a game engine, you can set the material to emit. So then the actual billboards themselves will emit light onto the direct environment. So there's only one thing left to do. Let's go to your output, choose the location where you want to save your cache, hit RGB, that's if you want a black background, or if you want alpha, so you want transparency, set it to RGBA, and then you have to go to your render settings, because um, it will still appear black. You scroll all the way down until you come to film, and then you hit transparent, and then that will render out an image sequence as transparent. I'm not gonna choose that option, so I'm gonna go back to my output. I'm just gonna keep it as PNG RGB, and that will save an image sequence. If you want to save it as a movie clip, I recommend going for FFmpeg, and go to encoding, change it from Matroski to MPEG-4, and keep it at H.264. Medium quality is sufficient, that's good enough. If you set it to high quality, it's gonna be a bigger file size but medium quality is absolutely fine. I'm gonna go back to PNG and then simply hit Control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. Another tip here, if you want to change these to like electrical sparks, just go to your particle and you change the colors of these. So this would be a really light blue. This would be sort of darker blue. And then this would be kind of a pinky purple, kind of like electric sparks going on. So F12. You can give it the colours of a rainbow, it's completely up to you. So now all that's set up, you just push Control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. That's it in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click the like button. If you want to see more content like this, click subscribe. Have a great day and thanks for watching.